Welcome to Metal Talk, my friends. Uh, I'm so, so happy about today's episode. We have one of the most legendary drummers in power metal, if not the most legendary drummer in power metal. Before we begin, I invite you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can do more, more interviews like these. I absolutely love all the comments that you guys leave us, so thank you for participating. Muchas gracias para toda la gente que se suscriba a nuestro canal. Se lo agradecemos de todo corazón, y eso es para hacer más entrevistas de los músicos que tú quieres escuchar. So, um, let's go ahead and start. I'm so happy to introduce this guest. Uh, he is the most amazing drummer, in my opinion. He has delighted us with his thunderous drums with bands such as Angra, Rhapsody, some Blind Guardian collaborations, of course, Seeds Even, the great, the one and only Mr. Alex Halsworth. Mr. Alex, how are you today? Thank you very much um, for those kind words. And I'm fine, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here and participating in your show. And it's always great to hear, you know, how great you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, but in, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's great to be here. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Perfect. Alex, um, you know, we're living through very difficult times for musicians. COVID-19 has devastated the entertainment industry, devastated the music world uh, in so many different ways. And now, um, I guess, musicians that we love and respect are obligated to do other tasks. What are you doing to stay busy during these difficult COVID times? That's, that's funny because I have um, so much things to do, so much more than, I'm even more busy than, you know, I was before. Um, you have to know that I always had like um, a lot of students. I was always, uh, you know, doing this uh, drum lessons in uh, the drum school, Drummers Focus in Munich since 20 years. So mm -hmm. that was uh, always part of my um career to to be safe you know so i could um a little bit decide which band to join or what to do a little bit more than uh, others who may uh are more you know relied on 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 jobs with playing on tour and and studio only you know so mm -hmm. that that was kind of um is now for me it's something good because the students are still there you know there's all the same amount actually which is amazing so i'm busy with uh, that it's almost a full-time job actually mm. and um yeah and, and i'm doing this double bass classes extra classes <laughs> for you know double bass uh, drumming and and that stuff which i do since 10 years and even more you know that's my passion and um now i'm really working on you know some some new stuff like um, I call it the butterfly technique, the, uh -huh. something like some uh, kind of new uh, double bass technique where you can really be, uh, you know, you can just leave the work to, to the pedal and, and be more free to listen to the music, to, to uh, enjoy all that stuff more. And that's a very short version, you know. We're going to talk more about your technique a little bit later. Let's yeah. dive into your career, Alex, because oh uh, there's so many details, so many things and, uh, and, and funny uh, uh, situations that you were uh, uh, stuck in. Let's start off with, your, with the beginning. Uh, around the year 1993, you come into the light of power metal uh, when you record the drums for a band named Angra. Of course, everybody knows Angra. Uh, at the moment... Uh, you were replacing Marcos Antunes, which uh, was their drummer at the time. Apparently, um, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce his last name correctly, but uh, Charlie Barfind? Bar uh, Barfind, Bar 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 yes. Charlie so Bar uh, Charlie Barfind, you know, very well-known producer in the world of metal. Uh, he suggested that you came in to record those drums because obviously Marcos apparently wasn't uh, prepared for that type of technique or speed, etc., what was that situation like for you, Alex? And who brought you into that fold? Was it Charlie or was it Sasha? What happened? Okay, it was like, um, you know, the, I start from the beginning. Charlie just called me. I was like going to, to sleep or something. It was in the evening and late evening and he called me. Hey, um, do you have time? Can you come tomorrow to record uh, some songs? easy songs because before um that was actually not the beginning because before i was with sieges even um we worked mm -hmm. with charlie before with two records it was steps and a sense of sense of change which mm -hmm. were like 
su super progressive, crazy uh, stuff, you know. Right. And and so he he thought, okay, Alex, I call Alex and um, to help out, you know, for uh, saving the situation with Angra because. Um, Back then, it was they, they put a lot of money in, on the table to to finish this record, the first record, and there's there's you know a lot of stories to um, yeah they just had to 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 finish it. They had mm -hmm. the studio booked in Hamburg, everybody was there, so um, I was just um, feeling like I help those guys. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I did not really um, want to to get somebody out of the band and it was just a studio job to, to help and uh, to make it happen. And this is how I feel. And, and the, the guys really treated me super well. And hmm. for Marco on tunes, I think I prom pronounced right. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but for, I was so sorry for him. And I saw him once, you know, coming in the studio with, uh, yeah, just, you know, saying hi. And it was just a short, you know, it was a situation where you cannot do anything else, you know, and mm -hmm. it was actually the producer's Charlie's um, decision to do this. And uh, so, yeah, what can you do? Let me ask you something. Were you, uh, did you collaborate on the writing on the, of the drums for the songs or were they, were they already prepared and were they already, did they have, did they use electric, uh, like an electric kit to do the, the track and then you just came in and did the real drums? What happened there? You know that there were not so many electric kits. If I think about it, I mean there were not even there were like triggers, but there was no, back then there were not really electronic kits. You know, so uh -huh. everything changed so much. But um, I mean, it was like this: he called me. I came the day after. I was driving uh, during the night with the train mm -hmm. to sleep and to start working the next day in the morning. I remember Charlie picked me up. At the train, train station in Hamburg, we went to the McDonald's to, oh, I'm sorry, to <laughs> whatever, you know. <laughs> and For we, breakfast? We had breakfast, yeah, it was uh, great. Get a burger and then we uh, just went to the studio and worked, mm -hmm. start, started working. working. And it was every day, like, um, it was like planned just to do a weekend. So to do it. So we, we heard the song. I had to learn it and then I had to record it. When mm -hmm. that was done, next song, next song, next song. Right, right. So it was really long, 12 hours a day, was the, when, if I remember right. It's an incredible album. And, you know, you spoke about Andre Matos and Siege Even. There is an album, or at least a demo. Uh, I'm not sure if it, if it ever was released. Uh, it, it was named uh, Looking uh, Glass Self. Mm -hmm. uh, and which Andre Mato sings, which he's even, um, was that with, it, it's, it's a really good demo. I listened to it. I had a chance to listen to it on YouTube. Did you guys ever release that or no, Alex? Was it, a, it, was it an official release? No, it was never officially released. It was, um, it was just a demo and, uh, um, we wanted to, to get a deal with it, you know, a record deal and, mm -hmm. uh, but there was no chance because the people thought, okay, you have those, those guys of my brother play, uh, played bass in, in Blank Guardian. Then you had the Rhapsody drama. Then you had the singer of Angra. Uh, so they expected this power metal, melodic, happy mm. metal stuff. Mm. And everybody was then, you know, completely confused with that great. I mean, those songs I really like a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but this was such a, different kind of music so in the end nobody wanted to sign us and mm. it made no sense to to do something with it and we mm. never talked about it lately um again you know so right you know um recently obviously speaking of andre matos um how did you feel about his passing? Uh, um, you know, this recent passing of Andre was so sudden. It shook the, the, the metal world in its entirety. How did you feel about it? Um, can you remember anything? Did you have any experiences with him? Uh, like, for example, recording this album? Or, or back then, when I you mean, recorded Angels Cry? Yeah, I mean, Angels Cry were like, we, we met two times. And, and late, later, we, we played together with Shaman in Mexico once, uh, Dawn of Victory times and stuff. And um, we were always like friends. Um, we mm -hmm. never met, you know, as often. But once he, he went to Munich, and uh, I don't remember 
if I asked him to, to record those songs, but, but he came to Munich. So there has to be, there was something like before, like to ask him, you know, can you right. do the vocals and stuff? And he was, yeah, we were like, uh, he would never have done it if he would not be like, you know, know me or, you know, in a good relation or whatever. So he came to my, to my, to my flat and, and we, we, we were always talking a lot and was always like, uh, I mean, he was really an amazing guy. Um, I think everybody knows. And uh, yeah, I mean, the time was always, I mean, those, I think that were all together, like maybe 10 days or something spending together. But um, I, I remember almost everything, you know, because it was so nice. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the death was, the death was like something yeah, devastating was, actually. Right, it was terrible, terrible to hear, uh, especially because it was so sudden and everyone speaks so uh, wonderful of him, you know, and that he was such a nice guy, uh, etc. Uh, but, you know, moving on and a few years later, uh, around the year 2000 is that you join uh, Rhapsody. Tell us how do you uh, how do you start this uh, this relationship with uh, uh, Luca and Alex Daropoli and how was all that process for you, Alex? How did you come into the mix? So first of all, thank you very much. Um, it was like you know everything comes together. Um, this Angra record was Sasha was I met Sasha for the first time before mm -hmm. there were the Sieges Even records uh, where Charlie was like um, you know recording us. And uh, so Sasha was, Rhapsody were about to tour the first, for the first time with Stratovarius and Sonata Artica, which was one of the best tours I've ever made. Wow. And um, yeah, they needed somebody who was like able to play to the click track very well because they had this massive um, orchestration play mm. playback stuff going on in the choirs and, you know, orchestra going on. And that was like, um, the most important, actually, to have somebody who is like able to go through those songs and to keep the click and uh, also this speed and blah. So uh, Sasha remembered, yeah, Alex is like, a, he said, Alex is like a nice guy and tried to call him, you know. So that was why I remember when Luca and Alex, they called me, that was on Christmas. And I did not really understand because this Italian accent was like a little bit, <laughs> it was hard <laughs> to understand. And, and but before Sasha sent me already the symphonies of Enchanted Lands. And I was about like, why he's sending me a CD of a metal band? Because he knows that I listen to my stuff, but not, you know, maybe not that kind of stuff. But I was, I, I thought this is really good stuff, you know. And, mm -hmm. and later, yeah, look at, called me on my, you know, telephone machine and was like, <laughs> hey, uh, you don't know us. I remember the words, you don't know us, but uh, uh, we want to know you. We're from the band Rhapsody. And I didn't understand the word Rhapsody. So I had to li <laughs> listen again and again. Is it, can it be Rhapsody? You know, that, that, was, that was the thing. And, and it was like Christmas uh, yeah, on, in those days. And I was about to, to leave uh, the flat and I was always my my mind was like wow that would be great you know to go to to, to get the chance for joining a, a bigger band you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was the first a big thing for me actually to yeah that was amazing killer so um how do you feel uh, definitely this is one of the uh, many questions that uh, a lot of fans have Alex about Rhapsody because obviously there's been uh, different paths that, uh, that Alex and Luca have taken. Uh, and ultimately, they created a very, similar, a very similar band, but separated. How do you feel about that separation? Um, I mean, ultimately, I think the fans win because they have more to listen. But what do you, how do you feel about it? Yeah, okay, I mean, you want to hear the truth? <laughs> No, it's, um, I, yeah, we can always say the truth. You know, there's in the band, in the bands, there's nothing like, uh, we, we can talk about everything. Um, for me, it was always, it's very hard because you have to remember that we had the success of Symphonies of the Enchanted Lands, mm -hmm. right? Dawn of Victory, 
Power of the Dragon Flame and stuff. You know, that was mm-hmm. like 2002, Power of the Dragon Flame tour, Japan, first time. Edgar is supporting us, you know. And you know, we were really like on, on a good way. But we had to stop for for certain, um, for some, I, I think it was years. We were not able to do any touring and anything because there was like, you know, um, a legal fight. And, and then we, we started to... Um, to get a deal again with uh, a nuclear blast mm-hmm. and we came with frozen tears of angels, you know, so the, all those years were already hard because of this, you know, the career went like this and then we had to stop it was very hard. And for right. a band, like you, if you see the first 10 years, what's going on in those 10 years, it's very, you know, it's not the greatest thing you can do. But then we made it with Frozen Tears of Angels. Again, we had a fantastic tour in Europe, every, everywhere around the world. It was just amazing. And um, yeah, then there was the split. I played in two bands, in two, both versions first and stuff. But for me, it was always, if I played with this one or was in the studio with the other one, I was missing the other guys, you know? So, right. you know, that was, I never liked it. Mm -hmm. to tell the truth. And uh, then later on, we made this reunion tour Mm, where Alex did not participate, but also this tour was amazing, you know? And, uh, but there were always like, um, I don't think that everybody's happy and we have these two bands and uh, I mean, it's great. You have more records, but you know, I I really, I'm a fan myself. So um, I like, if I see my favorite bands, I have certain kinds of records, which, uh, you know, the chemistry, the magic, everything mm-hmm. has to be there. If, you leave, if there's one guy leaving and, and all this chemistry breaks down or goes, you know, it's, it's not there anymore, uh, it's very hard for me as a fan. So I, can, I think this for the fans is the same, actually. I agree. You know, it would, it, would, it would be a lot better to have, uh, you know, the original, uh, you know, or, or, or the best lineup, really, uh, c- come back together. Because really, those were the, the, the best albums, I, mean, I think, from Symphony of Enchanted Lands uh, mm. all the way to, uh, to be honest with you, with, uh, you know, Power of the Dragon Flame between that era. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, it's just fantastic Rhapsody, mm. in my opinion. What would you, you said you're a fan yourself. So what would be your favorite, favorite uh, album from uh, Rhapsody? W- which one do you like the most? That's hard. It's a tough one, huh? That's, At least to play tough. live then. To play live? It, it's which different. Song? It's completely different kind of yeah. question because, uh, right. I mean, you know, the, the thing is, when I record a record, also, I, this is like something I never listen to the records later on. So mm. I just for the for the songs I have to learn for playing live because in the studio was always like um, I had to learn, you know, this song and then to play it and then you forget again and the next mm-hmm. song and the next song was always like this. So right. um, my relation, oh, I mean, for the songs, Symphonies of the Enchanted Lands for me is something really special because that was uh, play the songs live in, in this tour on this tour was like killer because Stratovarius and uh, Sonata Artica, everything was like sold out and, you know, in Spain. And I remember all those gigs in, in, in France and it was f- so amazing, you know. So for this experience, and, and I like, I really like the songs and uh, also the, the color of the songs, you know, it's something unique. And uh, the first guitar riff, is like this is uh, really emerald sword. The riff. Right. If you hear this one, you you know that's. I think that's one of the top maybe, two hundred. I don't know. I just say a number now. Uh, riffs of of uh, yeah, of not all time, but it's, it's it's an amazing thing. You know, it's it just is. magic, and that's that's maybe the only one. Maybe Holy Thunder Force. The riff is also great, but. You, the, once in your life, you create a riff like this, you know. So that's my, my opinion. But also the other Rex, uh, Frozen Tears of Angels, is also amazing, I think. But, I mean, you know that I don't uh, never write the drum parts. It's mm-hmm. always there, you know. It's just um, there are some li- like uh, licks you can do or mm-hmm. fills. 
Right. And uh, there's, um, if you can bring some ideas, but working with Luca or Alex, I mean, I have really big experience working with both and both together and separated too. Uh, it's always they have their visions and um, you give up after <laughs> two or three songs to, to you know, because uh, I understand and it's a good thing if, if uh, somebody has a vision, you know, and know, knows what he wants because, I mean, talk about, talking about Luca, he has always like, drums for him is something like another instrument in the classic orchestra sometimes, you know. So you have mm. this... Um, there's a drum fill, there's a space for a fill, and you have just to, to make it happen what he thinks he want to feel about it, you know, because he has all the orchestra stuff in his head, which is coming later. So for the drum recordings, I don't even know what's going on later with the choirs, but he has everything in his head. So if I play the fill too long and he said, oh, but there's a flute coming, you know. I say, I say like, what, what about the flute? I don't care about the flute, but, <laughs> but, but he cares a lot about the flute. So we keep it. And uh, the other, like he suggested. So that's what, how we work. Uh, but the licks are always my licks because I think the lick in the Rhapsody program drums f before the recordings are always the same lick. It's always, du -du 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 always. Got it. on all the songs. It's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the same yeah, feel. It's always, yep. poof, and then double bass. And then double bass for the whole song. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, for, for Rhapsody, you just need three or four pattern to play, and then you can play all. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, but, but that's the it's truth. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, this it's is why, true. I, why I have this stamina, because I always play the same groove. So if I, I'm not able to play this groove, after all those years, I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's, I mean, let's, move, let's move on and talk about um, Avantasia. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Um, again, uh, Avantasia has to be probably one of my, one of my favorite bands out there. Um, the first two albums, and then you collaborated on the others. But the drums on the first two albums are completely insane. Talk to me about how, about how Tobias approached you for this. How, how did this happen? Ed Guy, obviously, and uh, Ed Toby is one of, my, one of my favorite singers as well. So talk to me about how did you join Avantasia? What happened there, Alex? Uh, that's, that's cool because I like those guys a lot. You know, everybody, we are all friends. And also with Rhapsody, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really cool because we really are close. Mm -hmm. um, with yeah, Toby, it was the same story like uh, before with Bauerfeind and Sasha Pete and Charlie Bauerfeind and Sasha Pete. There was a show with Ed Guy, and uh, it was like this my brother was playing in the rehearsal room with Blind Guardian. They rehearsed for a tour or a studio, I think tour. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, my, Toby called in the, in the rehearsal studio in Blind Guardian's rehearsal studio and asked, Tomen, I think, if he could replace Felix because Felix was in the States. He had some, you know, was uh, doing some holidays, vacation. And, uh, and Tomen was, uh, yeah, it was before the tour and he was super busy with, you know, getting his stuff, um, you know, had so much, you know, his brain was full. So uh -huh. uh, he, said, he said, yeah, but uh, I think I saw them on stage last time in Wacken. And I, we were talking with Tomin a lot and stuff. So Tomin asked my brother, hey, um, maybe Alex, your brother can do it. And it was like this. So he asked my brother, hey, can your brother play double bass and stuff? <laughs> Which was kind of funny. Maybe it was Hansi on the phone. And, and then, yeah, Toby called me and we were talking like, yeah, sent me the CDs because back then it was like, um, you had a show in five days, but before you are waiting for the CDs, like mm -hmm. two days, wasting right. time for this. And there was also no rehearsal. And uh, we just played one song in the rehearsal room of Edgar. Where we recorded Avantasia, the drums later on, that studio. And then we, we made the Edgar show, the first Edgar Wacken show. Mm -hmm. um, and then he, he all, next day he asked me already if I would be able to, or would like to, to record his solo record. It was like, he wanted to do a, a solo record later that became Avantasia, which was also supposed to uh, be 
the drummer was um, actually first Danny Zimmerman from Gamma Ray. No he way, was, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was supposed to play. And uh, because they toured and Toby was a big fan because Daniel Zimmermann is, is a great drummer. I it's mean, incredible. I know him too. He's, he's just, look, it's, he's, he's so, he has so much power, you know. Yeah, One of those guys who are really kicking ass. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but Toby wanted to rehearse because he just had his sound machine, you know, where he sang all his ideas. You know, he was on the fields. He always told us and there was like, okay, this is the guitar melody, do, 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 do. And now the drums play like the hits or they play a groove. And the bass plays this and the guitar this. And so he had, he needed uh, the band completely in the studio mm -hmm. to make the songs ready, actually. Wow. And that's what we made. And this is why the first two records sound uh, so different from all others because it was, uh, I think every musician could, do what he wanted first of all and second um it was like a band we, we rehearsed we made three songs a day was one wow. week in the kai hansen studio in hamburg three songs a day and um yeah we recorded it on tape mm -hmm. and then we went to drink beer and uh, next day the same always three songs and we made two both records so we made wow. uh we made like yeah we rehearsed all the songs for the two records. Then we went home for one day or two, and then we went in Fulda to the studio. And uh, then I recorded the, I don't know why, but I recorded the songs in two days for two records, but two or three days. Which it was, was like, crazy. it was like magic, Alex. It was like magic yeah. back then to see an all-star band. It was like, and then- I was, uh, not, I was not the star back then. You, you know why? Because it was 99 we recorded, I was not even in Rhapsody and uh, I was just a CGS even drummer, which is like, was an amazing band, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but was not so known. And then there was like, yeah, the call for the tour with Rhapsody and Toby mm -hmm. could put on the, on the single, on the EP, like right. Rhapsody members, you know, because of this. <laughs> and because I remember he told me, oh, this is even better for me now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, oh, man, what uh, I remember seeing the photos uh, for the album, you guys hanging out, hugging each other, laughing, uh, you with long hair. Um, yeah. And I'm telling you, to me, it was magic. Like, to me, I couldn't believe that my, my musician heroes were all buddies and they were friends and they were making a special album together. It was fantastic. Um, obviously, really I mean, I have, I have to ask you, did you... Uh, uh, I don't know if you have listened to everything else that Avantasia released, but what, do, do you like Avantasia's music? Uh, what, do you prefer the first two albums over everything else? How do you feel about Avantasia? That's, that's a tough question. First of all, I don't listen at all to this kind of metal. That was the same with Angra, first record, Angels Cry. I remember, I mean, it was like 92 or something, and I recorded that, and I was like, I, we were playing with CGS even, which was innovative for me. You know, I was very young, you know, uh, had this stuff like, oh, we are the best and, and everybody in his head and, uh, it, you know, young. And, <laughs> and so I, for me, Angra, the first record was also something like, wow, oh, this is nothing new. You know, this is, I've heard this thousand times before and now mm. they put some orchestra. You know, for me, it was like, I listened to Watchtower, um, you know that stuff, mm. Hades and all those great bands. And so um, that's the same now with Avantasia, the first two records. For me, that was like power metal and was not even the name there back then. But um, for me, that was also like classic metal. And uh, I never listened to that kind of stuff. But um, if we talk about the magic for me, myself, because I mean, I'm involved, so I cannot say like, I, I cannot tell you why I like the first two more than the others. <laughs> Maybe it's just because uh, I was able to do anything what I wanted. I remember I was recording with Norman. It was recorded with a tape machine, you know, mm -hmm. with a tape machine. So wow. there was like, oh, Norman, Norman uh, can, you, can you drop in? Drop in was like something back then. It was you had to record the song 
And if there was a break somehow, you could drop in and do the second half again. But right. it's not like today you can, you know, choose what you want and all that stuff. That's always mm -hmm. the thing when the people say like, um, ah, back then, now you played, you are so lucky that you were, you know, living in those times back then because now you're a star. And for us now, it's so hard. I, I have to say it's, I think it, and on any time or every time, Where you live, it doesn't matter really which time you, you start. It's always the same. You have to do really your stuff in a way which is like um, special. I was just listening to um, uh, the first album from Avantasia, uh, Reach Out for the Light. You were talking about that you like because you, you could do what you wanted. Those fails, man. The way the toms sound, man. I really love the way your toms sound in those albums because... It's very organic. You feel mm -hmm. the, the resonance of the toms. Even when you mm -hmm. go to the, to the higher notes, the thum, like you mm -hmm. feel that resonance and you, and you hear the resonance and you don't, I don't hear that that much in the genre uh, nowadays. So fantastic, fantastic albums, fantastic drums. Congratulations for all that, man. It's incredible. And we continue to talk about your career, but now with uh, your time with Blind Guardian, the very mm -hmm. famous concert that you flew into uh there's a video um uh in your youtube called my time in blind guardian which i was checking out as well uh that kind of uh, shows what you did in brazil and chile um how how was that for you why did you replace tommen was he sick uh I, from, from what i understand he got sick correct and then mm -hmm. you came in to save the day talk mm -hmm. to us about that time what happened alex okay it was it was uh also a You know, all those stories, I should write a book about it because yes. it's, it's, it's really, <laughs> no, I won't, yes. but it's, it's really funny. <laughs> I mean, now, I, you know, we were talking here like everybody's going to know because we do the interview anyway. So, but it's like every story has this funny things. I was uh, playing with my family, like uh, Lord of the Rings, the game, you know, mm. the table yeah. game at the evening. And we said before, I said to my brother, we lived in the same house. And I told him, yeah, have fun tomorrow to, with Guardian. You, you go to Brazil or whatever, you know, or two, in two days. I said, already goodbye. And, uh, and he said, uh, yeah, we played the game. First time ever, never again. Hmm. And my brother called me, you know, Lord of the Rings, the, the game. And, and my brother called me, hey, now you have to come with us tomorrow. And I was like, uh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, why not? I'm always <laughs> saying yes to everything, you know. So, um, yeah, then he brought me some CDs. Uh, Tomin called me, hey, can you do it? Is it possible? And I said, uh, I don't know if it's possible. Uh, yeah, why not? You know, for me, it was, I don't know why I said yes, because it was, I don't know. I mean, it was also for the, for the crew and the band, if they would have canceled the shows, You know, it's always a lot of money who goes of course, yeah. off. And, and I was like, I thought, I felt I could do it. And I have to say that I never listened to Guardian, never. And it's not my kind of music. So even if I shock the people and the fans, uh, <laughs> I love the fans really because they took it so well that Tomen was not there and it was just me. Mm. But it's, it's um, yeah, I had to learn everything. What happened to Tommen? What happened to Tommen, Alex? I remember that he has some, had something with his elbow or something. Oh. Okay. On, the, on, the way to say, on the right or left? I, I don't remember this. Mm -hmm. But there was something and uh, yeah, so he, he asked me to do it. And there was one show supposed in Brasilia, I think the first one, which was canceled. And then the second, um, th so I had one day more. You, you saw the movie? I did. Uh, on the, yeah. On, on the building, right, uh, right, I was right. learning the songs. I had one day more, but the first show was in Sao Paulo, hmm. and uh, it was f sold out, and uh, that was crazy. I could oh. choose the songs. I could choose all you? the songs. This is why we played all the fast songs because there was the most easy ones, and I, I chose all the songs. And, you and chose every, them really? Yeah, yeah, all the songs. They gave me wow. first of all. It was first show was. I could choose all the songs and then, yeah, this was funny. I had to learn the songs on the CD player and we went in the airplane 
And that was my time to learn because it was the wow. next day or two days later. And there was uh, the stewardess coming telling me, hey, you cannot use the CD player because of the laser in the airplane. No way, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, okay, fuck. What, what can I do now? Because it cannot get worse, you know. And so I took uh, something to cover. And so I, <laughs> but there was burnt CDs, so there were no titles. And I didn't know the songs. That was really hard. But uh, it, it was possible somehow. Mm. And uh, that was great. And also the fans, I was there with, with Rhapsody just before. And uh, that shows were the same venue. And everybody liked really, um, yeah, there was like, you know, a big, big welcome again. You know, the people really liked the Rhapsody shows. They were going crazy. And with Guardian, same, you know, that was fantastic. I remember Kiko was there also, you know, on the, on the show. Oh, know. really? Kiko, Kiko yeah. was there? He wanted to check you guys yeah. out? Achilles too later. He, he, yeah, oh, last wow. time on the stream, he told me he made a picture. Yeah, yeah it's funny. It's a little, uh, yeah, small world. And, you know, the year 2000, uh, around the year 2000, was very, very big for you, Alex. A lot of things started happening. Yeah, uh, 20 in the years beginning. ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of things started happening. Camelot, Camelot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, played with Camelot as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, sure. when, when was that? What, do you, that was amazing you too. That was amazing because uh, I, I played with the original, uh, not original lineup. Tom is going to kill me. But no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, that was, that was with Glenn, the bass player, you know, right. Roy, yes. Roy, Roy. Right. And, and uh, um, yeah, it was, we, we rehearsed. I, I came to Florida well, okay. and uh, yeah, uh, we rehearsed there the songs a little bit. And then we went, uh, made this German tour with Axis, which was great too. I mean, we were supporting Axis actually. And, what, uh, uh, what year was this, more or less? Karma, Karma. Tour. During Karma? Oh, yeah, wow. Karma tour was amazing. was killer. Wow. was killer. And um, yeah, it was also because, I mean, they made the records for Sasha Pete's studio. Correct. So, so this is, I don't know why it should have, this is, I, I think, the reason why they asked me, because I don't remember actually who called me. <laughs> I, I don't remember this, but this is, was 2002. Yeah, where I remember we made the Power of the Dragon Flame tour. I was touring and Thomas was calling me. And wow. we were like, yeah, it was a lot of things back then. Yeah, 20 years ago. That was my time, ago. the he days, you know. Oh man, there was incredible <laughs> years for you, Alex. Uh, let me ask you something, man. Uh, you've, uh, you've mentioned a couple of times how uh, perhaps metal is not your cup of tea, as we say in the United States. Um, what well, is your is. cup of tea? What it, do you it like? Is, it is. It, it is, is. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. But I'm. Um, you know what? I like different kind of stuff. I mean, sure, I, I like Dio, the first records and right. stuff, or, or right. even everything now, and uh, Van Halen and all that uh, stuff is amazing. But now, and I was always a trash metal guy, you know. So oh, okay. I always, I, when Kill Em All came out, Bonded by Blood, oh my God, Nasty Savage, you know, all those uh, Savage Grays, you know, everything like being more brutal, not <laughs> this, too much happy stuff, you know, right, because, right, right. because back then life was for me was not always like this, you know, I wanted to have something more. You wanted, you wanted to be uh, more aggressive, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so what, uh, what are you listening to nowadays? Uh, what, is, uh, what are you listening to in Spotify or whatever you use? I, I like stuff like, still like Armored Saint. I'm waiting for the new record. Oh, Armored I Saint, think, okay. I think the last one was killer. And, and I'm waiting for the new one. Um, so it's just amazing. For me, it's timeless music. It's right. from some, it may sound like a little bit old school, but for me, this is kind of classic music, which is timeless. And then I like Deftones, the new one, and all the, oh, a yeah. lot of records. I mean, this, that's the kind of music I really love. Um, Opeth and that stuff. But mm -hmm. Deftones, and uh, this is something, I always need a certain atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. having this, uh, yeah, you know, having all the feelings and it's important to have something special which touches me 
that's, you know, there's so many bands and I've still to discover, which is great on, on Spotify to, right, to right, check right. out. But, but for me, it always has to, to be something, yeah, like for you too, or for everyone, to, it has to touch me. Mm -hmm. And I need this nostalgic feelings, atmospheric parts and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Out there, so uh, let me ask you something else now that we're talking about your preferences. Who is uh, a drummer out there that you'd say, oh man, I really admire that drummer? It can be a, either alive or who has passed away. Uh, you know, for example, oh. Neil Peart, who we lost mm -hmm. recently. Who, who would be someone oh, for you? So, so many. There are so, so many. many. Yeah, there are so many f um, great, fantastic talents right now. Um, I just... I, sometimes I hear like drum parts like Deftones. I don't know the name of the drummer now, <laughs> but I'm new with Deftones. I discovered this band uh, since uh, I think two years now. And, and since we have Spotify, I don't have the chance really to check out what's the names. So that's the problem right. a little bit, but right. um, I'm sorry for that because he's a fantastic drummer. But those guys are like, you know, great. I'm just amazing. But for me, it's more like Neil Peart was, you know, when we talk about my heroes, mm -hmm. Alex Van Halen, Neil Peart, uh, also Cozy Powell I've seen, um, Tommy Aldrich, Dave Lombardo, Gene Hoagland. So you know. many out there. Yeah, this, this is too many, really. Yeah. I should do a list because I need like 50 people <laughs> to put them all in order. Because for me, drummers are also can be fantastic, even if the technique skills are not so fantastic. as Of course. You know, because they can touch you anyway. With, they can have such a magic in their feel or whatever. And I always mo like more this magic touch instead of having some with fantastic technic uh, skills and they don't touch me at all. There are also some out, out there, which, yeah. Right. No, I totally understand, man. I, I get you 100%. And with that in mind, Alex, we're now gonna go to our section, fan questions. Uh, okay. As you guys know, we posted, uh, we posted that we're going to have this interview. Thank you to everyone that participated. Thank you to everyone that left us a comment. Uh, we had a lot of participations this time around, all over Facebook and all over Instagram as well. So uh, we have some questions here. Let me go ahead and bring them up. Uh, here we go. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and start off. Christian Nosetti, Christian Nosetti from uh, Facebook, he asked, um, he says that he, during an interview, um, you said that uh, during an interview uh, throughout all this uh, Rhapsody turmoil that happened, uh, you said that you wanted to do different things. I don't know if you read mm -hmm. this. I read, but, uh, I read you, this. Did you read it? But apparently, this is fantastic. <laughs> it, it was funny, right? I, I thought it was No, it's it not funny. just funny. It's fantastic because this is actually, this is the other words we decided to take. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I'm sorry. When I left the band, um, that was <laughs> that was so funny. I'm, I'm so happy that somebody brings it up because this is the first one. <laughs> just imagine, just imagine. I was, that was written like uh, Alex wants to do something new or something else, and yeah. and and I was just happy that they let me go. You know, because I was really since a long time. Uh, I mean, I, we had really a good run with the band and nothing against those guys. But I really wanted uh, to have this. There were some things, you know, it had to happen. So, right. um, yeah, but it was very funny because uh, I did the same later on and nobody was reacting to that. <laughs> that was fantastic. But it's, you know that, yeah, yeah, that was just uh, so to, to answer the question. Um, it was just to have some words to yeah to write something <laughs> because say i think something to say something because it's like right. manu lotta i think it's that they wrote the same <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the last uh, drama of rhapsody of fire who right. came afterwards a friend of mine and uh they wrote the same yeah he, everybody has his goals and so it's always uh, like a common yeah sentence so <laughs> all the bands out there if you change members you can write um, there. This one wants to do something else. I mean, yeah, you always want to do something else, right? Makes so, sense. 
Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense, Alex. Thanks for clarifying that. We have another question from uh, Oscar Hinojosa from Instagram. He asks, uh, in your opinion, who is the best drummer today? Tough question, but how do you feel? Oh, my God. This is the question. This is a good question because I cannot answer this question. This is, <laughs> the question is um, a good one to think about what does it mean to be a good drummer or the best drummer of the world? What should be the best drummer of the world? I think this would be something like Superman or something um, because this is too much variety in the answer. There's the groove, there's the feeling, there's um, the technique, there's the speed and everything combined is like, you know, the thing is like the answer is actually everybody is because everybody has the, po the possibility and uh, potential. Everybody has the potential to be the best. And, right. uh, and it's not about to be the best, actually. Um, when I was like 12, I, was, I thought I'm going to be the best drummer in the world. But I was 12. So I had to learn that there is no best, you know, and uh, it's much better if there is no best because everybody's the best, right? So Right. Very wise answer. Very wise answer, Alex. Yeah, old um, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with maturity gives you a lot of uh, uh, intelligence. You're absolutely right. Our last question uh, <laughs> comes from... Uh, <laughs> our last question comes from uh, Jason Becker, and it's not uh -huh. the guitarist, uh, from uh -huh. Facebook. Jason Becker asks... Uh, well, he, he actually... He's, um, he wants to know... Uh, anecdotas que viviste durante tu estadía en Rhapsody of Fire. In other words, like... Uh, some memories of your, uh, of your time with Rhapsody of Fire. I'm guessing uh, a, a funny memory or a funny situation. I don't know if anything pops out of your head. I think mm. you've given us a lot of history about Rhapsody of Fire, <laughs> so that, that question kind of answers itself. Um, you know, uh, so what do you, any favorite memory about Rhapsody of Fire? Oh, there's so many. I mean, I, I just, I have one, which is like, you know, a uh, thing what happened on stage. Um, because the other stuff is all, it was like backstage and this is a lot of funny stuff, but I don't <laughs> want to talk about that because the other members going to kill me, um, right. uh, which is, but what is funny stuff? You know, uh, I would say it was Paris on our first headliner tour. That was first head. No, maybe it was the first tour ever with Stratovarius because we played the first night. Yeah. With Stratovarius was that. And uh, we had two nights sold out. And the first night we went on stage and my, for my click track, my button was on zero. Oh, and no. we started to show big intro, like Rhapsody style, you know, like five minutes, 10 minutes intro. Everybody was <laughs> like, okay, well, I pay, what, what's going on here? Where, where's the band? And then no click track. <laughs> oh, so that was like... I don't remember what we did. We started again. That was the first night, okay? So everybody was riding. Internet was just starting out. Like, oh, that was shit. And all this, you know, was like, the, the wow. band is nothing and stuff like this. Next day, we, we had the click track. So we played a great show. Oh. And then the fans were like fighting. It was fantastic, you know? <laughs> and and that, that, that's so great because... Um, at the moment when this stuff happens, like that's, that's really something, my God, you're so ashamed. I and, bet. But, but yeah, yeah, but now you can, yet now you can, now you can laugh about it and it's, it's amazing. Wow. Because the that's... fans, the fans who suffered with us, I don't even think they listen to us anymore. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's something, you know. Wow. That's what a, that's a, that's, a, that's a terrible situation to be up there on stage ready to go with no click track. That's, that's scary. Well, there's, a, there's another thing. What happened? I think it was in Colombia. That was also, that was crazy. Because, you know, the security stuff was like, it was back then in 2000, 2000 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a really high stage and everything was like, wow, the fans were super, super uh, and on fire, you know. And there was, again, this intro going on, five minutes. Dawn of Victory was the first song to start. Hmm. And uh, we wanted to start, and then electricity went down completely. 
Oh man, terrible. And they paid a lot for the tickets, you know, that's a lot right. of money for them, for the fans. And they went crazy. So we had to do something like going everybody till they solve the problem with the electricity. Otherwise right. they, they kill everybody, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I'm just, you know, as they, they are so passionate and they, they want to see the band. And uh, so this, this was like crazy uh, atmosphere. And in the end it came out, it was like a big beer bottle out of, uh, you know, like shiny with, you know, with the plug. It was no real plug. It was just like, you know. Just wires? So, yeah, wires inside the, the other one. And, and it was like, this was uh, the problem. So wow. they found it, solved it, and the show was great. And it's always great also in, to play in Colombia. It's, it's great. I mean, the next uh, gigs um, we're going to do, hopefully as soon as possible, uh, there are some, quite some schedules. So, Talk to us about what's next, Alex. What's next? Uh, what's coming up in your career? Obviously, uh, you know, once uh, this uh, terrible disease goes away, um, what, what, are you, what are your plans uh, for, 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 are you recording music? Are you uh, planning on going on tour, like you mentioned? What's next in your career? So now we are like, um, I mean, the, the corona crisis now, uh, like, all the plans are like completely, uh, you know, destroyed and, and um, we had really to, to stop everything. And we were just waiting for the tour to finish. Actually, we started already uh, last time in Mexico and uh, this tour now is again rescheduled for next year in mm -hmm. June, July or something. And um, I hope it's going to be, it's going to happen. And uh, that's the next step what we're going to do. And it's always like step by step. With right. uh, really Leone Rhapsody, um, those shows. And I'm always like open. I always get the information when new stuff is coming, like studio or whatever, you know, in the right. last moment. <laughs> so I'm used. And I also have these plans for... Um, the, for my butterfly technique, the double bass technique to spread it. I like it a lot to do workshops and stuff to meet people, drummers talk about this. And uh, I, I wrote also a book. It's almost finished about the best systems and really, you know, I cannot say good. Everybody's saying this crazy double bass exercises, you know, <laughs> crazy, crazy sy systems and crazy uh stuff and also i have plans with a great friend friend of mine in brazil which is like talking um we're talking about doing stuff together bringing you know like um different kind of uh drumming together mm -hmm. and um yeah putting something interesting for the fans like why this drummer from germany sounds so different from the brazilian one you know because wow. we have the the same um a uh, little bit like the same history and uh with me as a german drama playing in a brazilian band that was the idea you know mm -hmm. which is like for the people like ah the german this for sure he's gonna sound like a machine you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's i mean we have this thinking you know but i with my butterfly technique i always uh you know try to Get away. This is why I'm a trash metal guy, you know. <laughs> Alex, said, when is your... Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, when is your book uh, being released? You mentioned your book. Yeah, it's, it's actually... I don't, still don't know if this is going to be a book because uh, to release a book is like... It's not really sexy, you know. It's, um, I don't know. Maybe it's going to be an old school workout book. And okay. I try to, to get it ready, but since so many years, you know. So mm -hmm. I try to get it ready for maybe Christmas, but let's see. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe. Got it. Got it. So uh, be in the lookout for Alex Halsworth's, you know, book, his butterfly, his butterfly workshop. Please, please check it out. Check him out on YouTube now. Subscribe to his channel. Again, we're going to leave it in the description. Make sure you go in there, check him out, follow him on Instagram, on Facebook, and stay tuned because obviously Mr. Alex is always coming out with some incredible drums, incredible music out there. Hopefully. Alex, I hopefully. Alex, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for this metal talk. It's been amazing. Uh, anything else you want to say to your fans? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I miss uh, all the fans out there, all you guys um, who watches this now uh, very much. And uh, it was always, or well, I hope it's going to be again like it was before. 
it's tough times for everyone, right? And uh, I think it's not just about the, mus the musicians. It's also about the crew and stuff. They really suffer sometimes even more because they don't get any tantiemen or, you know, money for out of the records or whatever. They work for the bands like uh, as a road crew and they have to find different kind of ways to earn money. And also for everyone who, who wants to see concerts again, like the fans. And uh, it's tough times. I really hope everybody stays safe and uh, makes, you know, his living somehow. And hopefully we're going to meet soon again and uh, we celebrate double time. So stay safe and see you all. Thank you very much.